everyone, my name is Abby Bliss White and welcome to my channel. Yep, Olaf is helping me out this morning. Can you say hi, Olaf? <laughs> Anyhow, today we are going to have a little bit of fun. I am going to be testing some new perfume. I have got several new launches to share with you. I have got the new Killian Smoking Hot. Cannot wait to share that one with you. I've got Burberry Goddess, as well as the limited edition. This is the Shalimar Iris. So excited to share my thoughts on that one with you. I have got Creed Carmina. I've got a beautiful fragrance from Flori Goo. Just gotta show you this beauty right here. And I've got a sample of the new honey tobacco from Guerlain as well. So I just thought we'd have a little bit of fun sniffing through some perfume today. So if you are interested in hearing my thoughts on some of these new releases as well as just new to me perfume, then let's go ahead and get started. Okay, I've opened up a new set of tester strips. We are ready to kind of smell our way through some of these new launches. I don't even know where to start. I think we'll go ahead and start with the new launch from Creed. I have already spoken about this perfume several different times. I got a sample and decided this was full bottle worthy for myself. And first we'll take a moment to look at this gorgeous colored bottle. I was attracted to the bottle, but I also love the fragrance inside. This is a very feminine black cherry rose fragrance that has a kick of spices such as saffron and pink pepper. It also has a bed of some woods in here to sort of ground any of the sweetness and it is just really super beautiful. It's got a touch of peony and violet as well and I just fell in love with this fragrance. It meshed really well with my chemistry. This is also something new for Creed. They tend to focus on more fresh invigorating fragrances and I would say this is the most sort of sensual and sexy fragrance from Creed. This just felt like a very me fragrance. I have been into very feminine fragrances and this was definitely one of those but it's got a little bit of mysteriousness to it, a little bit of sexiness to it and I just completely fell in love with this. This is a fragrance that I knew that I would wear and use. Now admittedly when I heard that this launch included the note of black cherry. I was a bit worried. I didn't know if I would actually like this or not because cherry can be a tough note. But this is so well blended. Honestly, it is very rose dominant. So you definitely need to like rosy scents. And I feel like the mix of the rose and black cherry here are very smooth. That's what I would say. So let me read the notes to you. The head notes are black cherry, saffron, and pink pepper. I definitely do get a little hint of spice in here as well. Definitely a different take for Creed, but there is still that essence of Creed in here is what I would say. There's almost a teeny bit of a cleanness. That's what I've always loved about Creed fragrances is there's a certain DNA that I'm attracted to. And and I still find that essence to be in this fragrance. The heart notes it has rose de may, violet, cashmere wood, and peony. I tend to really like peony fragrances. I do enjoy rose fragrances as well. I would 
definitely say um, this is for fellow rose lovers because I do find that to be a bit of a dominant note in here. You definitely can smell a little bit of that kind of sweet violet note in here. I love how the woodiness is just going to balance everything out. And then in the base, it's got a couple of my favorite notes. It's got frankincense, myrrh, amber and musk and that's what I would tell you is there's this sort of mysterious slightly warm sensual underbelly to this that makes this sort of fun and flirty as well as a bit sexy and sensual as well and then I think that touch of musk um, gives me that like slight creed clean DNA that I personally love. So this one hit it out of the park for me. I've been kind of raving about this and yes of course I was attracted to the bottle and I'm excited that the weather's getting a little bit cooler because I think this fragrance is really going to shine in the cooler weather. I loved it even in the hot weather. So this is definitely a year rounder but I'm going to be excited to see how it performs in the cooler months as well. And as far as longevity, this one is a performer on me. A lot of Creed fragrances don't always have the longevity. They have the high price tag, but they may not have the longevity that you would expect from a fragrance with that price tag. And I have to say that Carmina is definitely a high performer, at least on myself. I felt like I was getting a full day wear with this. I also liked the way that it sort of enveloped me with a cloud where, you know, it was of course stronger when I first put it on, but then I would get little wafts during the day as if, um, sort of as if my skin was warming up and then I would get like a little burst of the fragrance again. So it did last for me at least a good six to eight hours, if not more. But I would definitely say that the performance is much longer than many of my other Creed fragrances that I adore and love and that I will just respray because I love them that much. This is definitely the longest lasting performer that I have from Creed. Okay, next we're going to move on to a new release from Killian, and this is Smoking Hot. And I was able to get a signed bottle here. Look at this. It says Killian on the back along with my name on the front. So excited. I believe they were having some event at Bergdorf's. And even though I don't live in New York, I was able to score this bottle. I want to give a little thank you to my friend Deb Rosen. She is a subscriber and a fellow frag head. And she gave me the heads up about this fragrance. And let me go ahead, spray this out. First of all, I just have to say, this is the perfect fall fragrance. This has this gorgeous like apple cinnamon smoke note in here that just like smells like fall to me. This also has a little bit of earthiness in it with tobacco and moss. And then in the base, it's got bourbon, vanilla, and then a note called Orcanox, which is also known as pure jungle essence and it's supposed to sort of punch up a fragrance and make it a bit more sensual. Now if you have ever been to like a hookah bar this is what this fragrance smells like but it is apple cinnamon hookah. <laughs> Um, that's what it smells like to me. And although I've heard some comparisons to Angel's Share, I don't necessarily feel like this fragrance is Angel's Share. It just has that sort of cloud and envelopment that Angel's Share gives you, like that little hug, that little beautiful scent trail. This is really stunning. This is a showstopper. And I personally feel like this has more similarities to the apple brandy scent because that one really shines with the apple, but there's a freshness to this. This would sort of be like the sexy date night fragrance 
of apple brandy. You're definitely going to smell like apple cinnamon wood that is burning. So there's definitely this smokiness to the fragrance. Then that dissipates. So if you're not a huge fan of like smoke in your fragrances, do not worry. That is going to dissipate. Then this dries down to this like gorgeous apple cinnamon vanilla slightly smoky tobacco essence. You're definitely going to smell a little bit of this sweet tobacco as it dries down. I also got a little bit of similarity if you have ever worn Herod by Parfums de Marly. Um, it had that feel as well, like, but they both have that delicious sort of gourmand cinnamon note in here that I'm just in love with. This one's going to be sweeter than Herod. This is definitely a sexy little thing. I absolutely love it. And again, if you are somebody who likes Killian Apple Brandy, if you like Angel Share, if you like Herod by Parfums de Marly. I kind of feel like if the three of those had a baby together, um, that's what this scent would smell like in a bottle. And this one definitely smells like fall and it is definitely smoking hot. Now, speaking of gourmand scents, Burberry just launched a new gourmand and this is Burberry Goddess absolutely love the bottle here and this one is going to be for my vanilla lovers so i really love this launch from burberry this is a vanilla lavender scent with a touch of spice specifically there's a little hit of ginger in here and there is a slight soapiness so to me this is this beautiful everyday soft gourmand scent. This is kind of what I would call like a no-brainer scent. Um, when in doubt, I'm going to spray this on. I'm going to smell amazing. I'm going to feel amazing and just easy wear. So let me read the notes to you real quick. This is a vanilla dream. So the top notes are going to be vanilla, lavender, cacao, and ginger. I think this is a beautiful take on lavender and vanilla. Um, very smooth and lavender always kind of brings about that spa-like quality. Um, vanilla in here is outstanding. You'll see there's a few more vanillas in here, but I definitely smell that little touch of ginger in here. There's just like a slight kick, a slight spice to it. The cacao is almost like a dusting. So it's not like super uh, chocolatey or anything like that. It just takes it slightly to the gourmand side. The middle notes are vanilla caviar and then the base note is vanilla absolute. So again, if you are a vanilla perfume lover, I definitely think you should get your nose on this. This one is a feel good fragrance. It's got enough depth and interest to it that it's not like too sweet. There is this um, almost soapiness to it that I like that gives me like slight gourmand feels with a little cleanness to it. Like I've come out of the shower and I'm wrapping myself with a big Turkish towel that's really fine luxury quality. And that lavender gives you that sort of spa-like quality. To me, this is just sort of a cozy everyday fragrance with a touch of soapiness right up my alley. The other fragrance that combines vanilla and lavender together is Jersey by Chanel. And that one is definitely aromatic and cozy. I would say that one's almost a little bit more powdery than this one. And this one has ginger in it. So it's got a little kick of spice in it that I feel like balances this out and makes it not too sweet. Um, there is definitely layers of vanilla in here, but it is not something that is cloying. I did not get any sort of headache from this. That's what I'm saying. There is this touch of slight soapiness. That there's this kick of spice from that ginger and cacao that I feel like just perfectly grounds this. This is just a great no-brainer 
everyday scent. It is cozy. It is relaxing. It smells great. And I personally feel like everybody needs one of these kind of fragrances in their collection. Just something that you want to wear when you don't want something too complicated, but you want to smell good. You want to smell cozy. You want to smell slightly clean. I think you are going to love Burberry Goddess. Okay, the next fragrance we're going to talk about is the limited edition Melamie's Shalamar Iris scent. Every year, Guerlain launches a limited edition Shalimar. Um, I think three years ago, it was a vanilla version of Shalimar. Last year, the note was Tonka, and this year it is Iris. And as of this morning, this was still available. Usually, these sell out right away, and I'm kind of surprised it has not sold out yet because... This is absolutely stunning. I am so in love with this version. So let me spray a little bit out here. Mm. So if you are an iris lover, if you are a fan of Shalimar, this is a no-brainer fragrance for you. <laughs> um, if you were somebody who loved Lancome's Iris Dragi, that has been discontinued, but that was this gorgeous iris scent that I always just sort of described as beautiful, classy, silky, lacy lingerie that was in a drawer with a pretty sachet in there. And, and it just smelled uber feminine. This has that element, but in the base of Shalimar. I will say this version is definitely more modern. Um, Shalimar definitely has that vintage feel to it. It is still a masterpiece fragrance for a reason. This version has top notes of bergamot. It's going to give a little fresh opening. And then in the middle notes, you have Italian orris root. Oris is the bulb of the iris. And when I see the note of oris in fragrances, usually I think of those as a bit more like buttery and creamy. I'm definitely getting a little bit of um, the kind of powdery iris note that you will often get. Like if you were an iris perfume lover, um, you know there's sort of that kind of earthy orris root, a little bit more buttery and creamy iris. And then the top, I always feel like, has this sort of powdery, airy iris feel. This one definitely has a bit of both in this fragrance. This definitely has a little bit of that Shalimar powderiness to it, but it is definitely iris floaty powder. And in the base notes, you've got sweet caramel, you've got Madagascar vanilla, you've got vanillin, as well as musk. And personally, I feel like there's no other house that does vanilla the best than Guerlain. I think they are the queen bee of vanilla. It definitely has that Guerlain vanilla DNA in here. And this one is definitely more of a powdery iris soft gourmand fragrance. Definitely smells amazing and I just love collecting these every year. So if this sounds like something that you would be attracted to, I would hop on over to the Guerlain site pick that up. They only make so many bottles and they tend to sell out pretty quickly. Then last but not least, I have a beautiful fragrance from Floreku and I have been intrigued by this brand for years. I had discovered them in Saks in New York and I finally own one and I'm so excited. This fragrance is Volcanic flowers. And I just want to show you how these are presented when you pick these up. This is like a whole experience here. You get the beautiful bottle with this stunning cap here. This is a piece of art. When I discovered them in Saks, I was just like, what is this brand? It is like so gorgeous. It just felt like artwork, which I consider perfume to be a form of art. And this is just stunning piece of art. 
But the cool thing is, this is actually an atomizer that you can travel with. So not only do you get the fragrance, but you get a travel size. And you're going to just stick this right in here becomes your beautiful travel atomizer. It's got this gorgeous weighty top that you're just going to stick on like this and then you can travel. And then it has another cap for you to place on your perfume at home. So just wanted to show you that cool little element and then let's talk about the fragrance inside. Hmm. So this is one of these fragrances that I fell in love with, but I fell in love with it because it is very complex. There is a lot going on here. Um, this isn't one of these that you immediately smell and go, oh, I have to have it. It's almost like this fragrance took me on a ride and I just, by the end of it, um, was addicted to it. So it's very aromatic. It has this really awesome note of coffee in here, chocolate, as well as quite a long list of warm spices to it but what I will tell you is there's this aromaticness to it as well that almost has um, sort of a cologne like smell to it as well so kind of leaning into this gourmand with a little bit of this freshness like a typical kind of cologne as well so let me read the notes to you because it's kind of one of these fragrances that is a little hard to explain but you will understand more once I read you the notes okay first of all the scent is described as a it flows like the molten lava from an erupting volcano that gradually coats the surface. When the power and the heat of the elements fuse, a new peaceful trail is blazed as the beauty of a flower cuts through the intensity. So you are definitely going to get this sort of volcanic feel to this fragrance when you first spray it out but as the name says there is some flowers in here this has lily of the valley jasmine absolute it has patchouli oil definitely smell like that addictive element of the patchouli and I would tell you that it is slightly earthy and slightly clean. It has bergamot oil so there's definitely this sort of aromatic freshness to this fragrance as well. It's got Madagascar ginger. Definitely get hit with a little bit of spicy ginger. It's got olibanum pepper and coffee accord. I definitely smell that coffee. Definitely like this rich element there. Cardamom oil, which gives this beautiful warmth to fragrances. I love cardamom. So kind of think of like a chai latte, like um, it has that kind of chai spiciness to it. Cedarwood oil, clove, gingerbread, that is one I think I definitely smell that note of gingerbread so you're definitely getting all of those kind of warm spices with the cardamom and the ginger and the gingerbread and then it's got lavender absolute a little bit more aromatic it's got nutmeg oil definitely again back to the warm spices amber creamy sandalwood leather and chocolate. So there is a lot going on in this fragrance and for some reason it's got so many of these elements that I just fell in love with. Like there's this slight sort of cologne cleanness about this fragrance but then there is this like complete warmth to it meaning like that chai latte like definitely smelling all of those warm spices and then it's got this floral essence to it that just makes it so unique so much fun to wear because it kind of takes you on a little ride here I find that the patchouli in here is like super addictive this is one that I like crave to wear when I want something a little bit more interesting um, this is definitely unisex as well it's got a touch of that lily of the valley and jasmine but it is not overly floral whatsoever this one has some sweetness 
from the floral, I would say. But now that I'm thinking about it, it's more like a chai coffee latte. Um, oftentimes people will order that and definitely I'm getting that chai feeling, but that uh, richness from the coffee is shining through as well as that chocolate note. Um, as it dries down, I'm getting a little bit more of this chocolatey essence to it. I'm also getting that feel as if I'm sitting down at a lovely cozy coffee shop and I'm ordering a coffee chai latte along with a piece of gingerbread. It's so funny because it's literally kind of rainy and damp. It definitely smells like fall and this fragrance is just really shining in this weather. I have to say if you live in a rainy um, environment, this one just completely envelops you and it's like a addictive and aromatic and fresh and warm and spicy. It's just like definitely so unique, so beautiful. And then again, you know, I usually lean a little bit more on the feminine side, but it has this little touch of sweet femininity with that jasmine and that lily of the valley, which I think is actually a kind of interesting mix of florals as well. Um, you know, growing up in the 80s, 90s, lily of the valley Valley was such a strong presence. And this is just such an amazing fragrance. I have just completely fallen in love with it. And I also do have a sample set from Floreku, which could be a fun video to kind of do the whole sample set because I don't know about you, but I have been so intrigued by this brand, by the beauty of it, and kind of the ritual that they talk about when they're talking about their fragrances. So super excited about this Volcanic Flowers. This one is definitely worth checking out, especially if you are looking for something a bit more unique. And then last but not least, I have a sample of the new Guerlain Tobacco Honey. I have been playing around with the sample trying to decide if this is a full bottle worthy fragrance for me. What I will tell you is this is definitely the most honey dominant scent I have ever smelled. Like it smells like pure honey dripping all over me and it is very sweet. And the honey actually sticks throughout the whole fragrance. Like they nailed it. The tobacco in here is definitely prominent as well well. And then it's got some beautiful spices as well as that Guerlain Vanilla DNA. Let me read you the notes here. Definitely are going to smell realistic honey. So that is in the top notes. It's honey. And literally when I smelled it, I was like, wow, um, realistic honey. And I swear it was like I dumped honey all over my body. Like that's what it was just like dripping with honey smell. It has clove and anise, so it's got that kind of lovely fall warm spices. Then in the heart notes, it's got tobacco, vanilla, tonka, you know, I love tonka and sesame. And, and then in the base note, it has oud and creamy sandalwood. Now, I didn't really pick up on any of the oud in here. So if you are somebody who does not like Food. Um, I would say don't count this one out. This did not have a strong oud essence, I would say. Um, I think I can smell a little bit of it in here, meaning um, there's kind of this rich resin in this fragrance as it dries down, but the two dominant notes in here are really going to be honey and tobacco. You absolutely have to love the note of honey. You absolutely have to love the note of tobacco because I smell that throughout from the opening to the dry down. The dry down of this is absolutely stunning, but I'm going to tell you that the honey is going to stick with you throughout the fragrance, meaning that realistic, sweet honey. Um, the tobacco definitely has a little element of smokiness to it. The tobacco in here is more like um, somebody who's smoking like a 
pipe you know what I mean so it's not like ashy smoky it is more like that kind of sweet tobacco that's going to envelop the room but again you need to like that note because it's going to stay without definitely has some spice in here that I feel like balances this out but again it is just like so sweet honey dominant that you just have to love that. So I actually really like this fragrance. My hesitation of this is in general, I am more of like a maple syrup girl versus a honey girl. Like I like honey, but I don't love honey. And this is where it comes in is it smells like realistic honey. For myself, I can see myself buying like a decant of this tobacco honey, but I don't know if I am going to shell out the big bucks for this launch because I don't know if it's something that I would gravitate. Um, I'd have to really be in the mood for it is what I would say. I definitely think it is a gorgeous launch. Um, I know that some people feel like it smells like tobacco vanille. I can see some of that but you gotta pour like a ton of honey on top of the uh, tobacco vanille to really like get kind of the element of this fragrance. Um, definitely let me know. Let me know if you picked it up, if you have smelled it, what your thoughts are. As usual, I always love hearing from you. What are your fall favorites right now? And I wanted to quickly remind you that Mandy Davis and I are going live tomorrow evening. We're going to be sharing some of our fall favorites. Maybe a few of these might be included in that live. We shall see. I'm still formulating my list, but we are so excited. We are doing our monthly series and this one is fall favorites. So hope that you can catch us tomorrow live on both of our channels, um, 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. So I hope you can join us and I hope everybody's having a great start to the week and I will talk to you soon.